Dear Jiu-Jitsu people, you don't understand what fundamentals means. This is not just an academic theoretical critique. This has real, practical, useful applications. And for those of you who don't practice Jiu-Jitsu, this video will still be a powerful tool to help you understand movement. Now, when we first start Jiu-Jitsu, we're all taught the importance of fundamentals. Fundamentals are basic techniques, how to open close guard, arm bar from mount, cross collar choke, etc. Fundamentals are typically taught as a technique comprised of a series of moves. I'll show you a better way because that's not what techniques are and that's not the way they're stored in the brain. If you truly understand this, it will change the way we do our sport and it will change the way you do and learn anything. Your brain is comprised of approximately 86 billion neurons and 100 trillion neural connections. What these neurons do and what your brain is completely unparalleled at is pattern recognition and prediction. Now, when I was first taught jujitsu, I was told a story about the legendary 400-0 fighter Higgs and Gracie and how he would literally take a line filled with his black belts and he would fight the first one armbar, second one, armbar, third one, tap, armbar. You would literally hit all of them with the same technique. They all knew exactly what was coming and there was still nothing they could do to stop it. And I was like, man, that's so cool. That's exactly what I want to do. And I was told if I drilled 50 armbars every day, within six months, I would have done 10,000 armbars and I would be a master of armbars. So almost six years later, I've gotten pretty good at armbars. Good enough that some of my friends call me Mr. Armbar. <laughs> but it's damn sure not because I did 10,000 repetitions of the same linear series of steps. After years of studying and teaching movement, motor learning, and even jujitsu, here's what I realized about techniques and fundamentals. They're never just a linear series of steps they appear to be. What techniques really are is a series of interconnected networks of perception action coupling. I perceive something, I perform an action. Oh, a cool ambulance! My opponent perceives my action and performs a counteraction. I perform a counter counter action Ain't nobody got time for that. and so on. These counter actions can be as subtle as a weight shift or a grip adjustment and it happens rapidly and in parallel on many levels. It's not that I go through this series of steps and at the end my opponent chooses whether to defend the arm bar or the guard path. If we go by human reaction time, every fifth of a second your opponent gets another opportunity to make a counter action. Successfully performing and learning a technique against a real resisting opponent is about systematically forcing them down a tunnel of despair, where no matter what counteraction they may take, they have less and less options until they are forced to succumb to whatever technique you used or submit. Hicks and Gracie may have drilled the armbar 10,000 or even 100,000 times, but it's almost irrelevant. The reason he can hit everyone with arm bars is because he knows and is very skilled at shutting down any and all counteractions that even expert opponents may perform at every single step of the way. Technique demonstrations are deceiving because they attempt to show you the linear path through that entire network, but that linear path will never work against a resistant opponent unless you're able to shut down all of the deviations and counteractions along that pathway. You can be aware of it consciously or unconsciously, but this is the way it is. Not just for grappling, but any discipline with a resistant opponent. In disciplines with a partner, it's the same, except your perception action coupling loops work together towards a common goal. In disciplines without a partner, it's the same, except that without counteractions from an opponent, the network is far more linear and the perception action coupling loop is mostly concerned with your own error correction. So here's a big question. How do we change things to utilize this knowledge? This new nonlinear conceptualization of a movement pattern is far more vast and complex. How should we teach all of this? Consider this example. At many academies, we start with learning the cross collar choke from closed guard. Basically, you get the cross collar grip, break their posture, get the second grip, then do the choke. People learn this in a linear fashion against an opponent that is usually told to perform no counteractions whatsoever. Then rolling starts, or if you're lucky, sparring in closed guard, and the beginners that practice this technique for the first time literally cannot get past the second step against anyone who has half a clue, including complete novices. Beginners are sometimes shocked they're completely unable to execute the move that they just performed for repetition so easily, and when they ask the higher belt what happened, they're told they just need more practice. But they never really got to practice it in the first place, and because they never got to perform the full pathway with counteractions, their retention of something they never really learned is gonna be really low, and the just practice modus isn't gonna be very effective. What if instead of teaching the whole move, we show the move briefly and focus on teaching just one step at a time against resistance? 
How do you from close guard get the cross crawler grip no matter what your opponent tries? And once you have it, how do you effectively break their posture when they're fighting like hell to stay upright? Or maybe we just have people start drilling the move against progressive amounts of resistance, just like any good strength training program, as soon as they can perform the overall move with any competence. Maybe the more experienced athletes spend most of their time drilling on the edge of the amount of resistance they can overcome and the amount of resistance they can't overcome and then troubleshooting the errors afterwards. Tim Ferriss talks about just-in-case information versus just-in-time information. I'm not a huge fan of Tim Ferriss anymore, but this is a really valuable concept. When we teach people a full move in linear fashion, it's just-in-case information. Just in case you find yourself in closed guard and your opponent it lets you get the cross collar grip and then they let you break their posture and then they let you get the second grip and they let you choke them it's really not going to happen which means no practice which means no retention versus just in time information for instance we're going to put you in close guard and you're going to have to get the cross collar grip to effectively break their posture here's all the ways he's going to try to stop you from doing that now get that grip or here's what you did wrong. Try it again like this. Because you got the information just in time to use it and you actually get to practice it, it's gonna be far easier to retain and it doesn't matter what you learn if you don't retain it. One more thing, we know that human memory recall is contextual. For instance, true story, we have a family member who's an opera singer and she's quite busy before a performance one time and she memorizes all of her songs for an upcoming performance as she drives her son to school every day. She tests herself, remembers everything, and assumes she's good. Performance comes along, and she goes on stage for a solo performance, and she forgets all of her songs. Luckily, they were in German, and she makes it up on the spot and no one notices. But she gets in the car to drive home afterwards, and guess what? She suddenly remembers all of her lines. What happened is, she had trained herself to remember those lines, but that recall was a cued recall, specific to the context of her car. Similarly, in jiu-jitsu, we are spending most of our time learning to perform the techniques in the context of no resistance. In addition to the non-linearity problem, how much of this goes out the window when we perform against resistance or in a competition simply because it's a different context? I love BJJ. I think it's the best martial art out there. But like all martial arts, it often falls into the trap of people blindly following in their teacher's footsteps for generations. And as the sport gets more popular, innovation can get left behind in favor of dogma. If you want to learn faster and train smarter, try to incorporate some basic science and movement principles into your jiu-jitsu. And you can do the same for everything you want to learn because this understanding can be applied everywhere. If you liked this video, check out this one, where I use imagery to improve in jiu-jitsu even after taking six months off, and I teach you guys the best methods to incorporate it into your training.